Hello and welcome to our channel. We're here to entertain you with some boss movie reactions. Let's get started. Hello everybody and welcome to Boss Movie Reactions. Now, this morning we woke up and we saw our counter standing at 9,990 something subscribers. Yes. So we thought, hey, a few hours later now, if we refresh this page, it might jump to 10,000 subscribers. Oh Isn't God, that amazing? Exciting. Thank so, you guys so much for being yeah. on this journey with us, but we're going to see. We're going to see. You're going to be we're live with us. Reacting to what happens. Yes. <laughs> All right, so you ready to refresh I'm that page? I'm ready to refresh the page, hon. Okay, let's do it. Okay. All the way here. And refresh. And is it refreshing? I don't think... Uh, yep, oh, it's yep. refreshing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's just slow internet. Blank for right now. Yeah, we. I was having internet issues earlier. Oh, we have internet issue, really? Is it really? Well, re refresh it again. That will be a bummer. <laughs> oh, no, it's coming. Oh, oh. oh yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> we did it. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank you all so much. Yes, 10,000 oh subscribers. Can you believe wow. it? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. not too long ago, I researched real quick to see how fast a decent YouTube channel should grow. And it clearly said that the average YouTube channel, it takes them 22 months to get the first thousand subscribers. And we now have 10,000 in 10 months, wow. so less than a year. So all to you guys. Thank, Thank you all so, so much so, for your so support. Much. That's exciting. Yay. <laughs> and now let's go over to our question and answer segment. So we'll see you in a second. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. everybody so we're back and as promised we decided for um, this celebration video we're gonna do a question and answer segment and you guys send in a lot of questions and we try to to go through all of them you're gonna read them and then we answer them as good as we can and you guys can learn something about us so yeah so here goes be fun. so um, at Gene B says what drove each of you into the movie business Ooh, well, that's a loaded question to begin with. I will say my love of acting was what started my journey to being in the uh, business. I never actually had any idea of the industry. Growing up, I was on track to be a doctor. Went, um, I was in high school for medicine. And when I hit 11th grade and we had to do an elective, I took theater in lieu of art and I fell in love. And so that's what kind of started the whole journey for me. All right. Um, I could probably fill an hour with my answer, but I will go very short here. Um, I grew up in Switzerland and uh, I was very unhappy in Switzerland. I was looking for the meaning of life and all that stuff. And I was surrounded by a lot of pessimism and that drove me into a dark place. And once I was in that dark place and came out of it, I asked myself, if I could really do whatever I want to on this planet, what would it be? And I thought, hey, being a movie star in Hollywood would be cool, you know? So I started taking steps to actually fulfill that dream. I moved out here, learned the language and all that stuff, and then started acting for a few years, which then developed into screenwriting and producing and directing. Now I call myself a filmmaker, and that's pretty much what brought me over here following my dream and this whole rich and famous thing that doesn't you know that that was you know mm -hmm. back then so All much right. more grounded now yeah so at um oh noe why is the lovely lady sitting on a seemingly uncomfortable chair <laughs> that is funny. okay that's, that's hilarious that's not the first time i got that question that's by the way funny because well you know, in LA, the place is really small. We don't have a lot of room. Um, and so we don't actually have a lot of chairs. Um, we have basically these, his office chair, mine, which is a, a yoga ball, which I can't really sit on while watching the movie. And then those uncomfortable wooden chairs. So that's my only option for now, but I'm thinking about actually getting 
um, a, an office chair that's maybe small but comfortable. Yeah. So if anyone has suggestions, hit me up right here. Something that's affordable. <laughs> and in my defense, I have to say, I told you many, many times, just order an office chair you that's did. more comfortable. But so it's not like I'm chilling in this comfortable chair. It's like, yeah, she can suffer on this <laughs> no. wooden chair. So <laughs> I just haven't had the time to be honest. It's, you know, I have a lot of things I got to get done. So, um, okay. B Cage says, Favorite movie you've reacted to on channel so far? That's a good one. Difficult one for me. I can never make up my mind. Well, okay. My favorite was actually Crocodile Dundee. Oh. Because I didn't expect it. I I, I had no idea. Like, I, I know I had heard about Crocodile Dundee, you know, but no idea that this movie would be so charming and scary. And it was just, it had everything. I had a love story, which I love love stories. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I, I can't make a, I mean, Contact, The Devil's Advocate, American History X, E.T. How can you choose the Rocky franchise? I mean, how could you make, I, I can't make up my mind. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go with Doug Warren. I would love to know what three things that attracted each of you to each other. Mm. You know, you're a magical conjunction and that's showing on here. Cheers. Well, thanks, that's sweet. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Um, the first, the three things. Well, when I met you in acting class, and that's another question later, I remember. But the, the, the three things would say first, from a man perspective, you know, beauty and her smile. I mean, look at this, you know, I mean, <laughs> come on. And then the second thing would be when I realized how down to earth you were, not LA jaded BS, you know. And the third thing was when I realized how smart you were, not just a pretty face, but also smart. So she was the whole package. Aww. Ditto. <laughs> well, I'll say the three things that attracted me was um, integrity, friendship, and muscles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys saw the video and the afterthoughts video. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, at Steve Winter. Hey guys, just wondering how long it takes and if you both do it or use an external source because your quality is excellent. Cheers. Well, thanks Cheers for to that. You too. Um, well, yeah, it takes a lot, a lot of time. We do not outsource anything because we feel like we have to do ourselves, you know, give us, give the movie reaction or touch. But editing takes between 30 and 50 hours alone, just editing. And on top of that, you can add another 10 hours to create the afterthoughts video and the thumbnails and then the uploading process and trying to pass the copyright test yeah. on YouTube can sometimes take two days. So now you put this all together, it's almost, you know, like working 10 hours, seven days a week just to put out one video. And if I have a doctor's appointment or we have an interview, then I lose a half a day and I have to try to make this up and it became, becomes very overwhelming very quickly. So maybe once in a while, we just release a video every second week because we have to catch up and we do other stuff, you know, we're filmmakers. So yeah. it takes a lot of time, but thanks for the kudos. Yeah, and I'll just kind of throw in real quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I we would love to do the videos a lot more fre uh, frequently, mm -hmm. definitely, but it takes a good solid week yeah. to release a movie every week. And we've been pretty good about staying consistent to that. But yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of, yeah, to get there. So and maybe one more thing in regard to copyright test. For example, um, I remember Tommy Boy, that movie reaction, that video. I had to create about 23 different versions and upload them to YouTube until I can finally pass and be able to release it. So, this, you know, it's it's a uh, much work. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. yeah. So Infamous says, what's your favorite movie and your least favorite? I mean, I'm going to guess you're asking about the ones we've reacted to or just in general. Well, Probably, yeah. Okay. Reacted to. Same thing for me, you know, I, I can't decide between Contact and Devil's Advocate, American History X and Dumb and Dumber. You know? So, 
my so okay one i really liked reacting to was rocky i loved rocky it really brought me in to the circumstances my least favorite to react to was dumb and dumber 2 mm -hmm. <laughs> because okay. i thought the first one was really funny and the second one was a little silly like overly silly uh and so i know you had liked it it wasn't really my particular favorite so that's, that would be my answer. Yeah, I definitely like Dumb and Dumb the first a lot better than the second, that's true. My least favorite movies are the ones we don't even upload, you know, and then I forget about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, at Alex Florea. Hello from Romania, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, oh, I was about to say my... <laughs> uh, Buna. <laughs> This is a question for both of you. If you were to be stranded on an island and you could only watch three movies, what what are those three movies? Hmm. <laughs> well, I guess I would try to pick different genres, you know. If I want to laugh, I might pick Dumb and Dumber or Liar Liar. And then if I want to be more serious and watch a drama, I would probably pick The Devil's Advocate. And then the third movie, well, if we're on an island, maybe something that I can relate to would be Cast Away. You oh, know, really. I, I couldn't watch that. No, <laughs> no, that would be the last thing I'd watch if I was stranded. <laughs> no way. Um, so for me, what? Okay, I love comedies. Um, so I'm going to name some that I've already seen. So I have. We haven't reacted to them on the channel. Legally Blonde. I really enjoy. Mean Girls. <laughs> I could watch that movie mm. over and over again. And now a movie from what we've already reacted to, I would probably have to say um, Crocodile Dundee. Mm. I really enjoyed that one and it was super, it was fun. Yeah, light very lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, 80s movies fan. Favorite genre, movies, franchise, actors, and TV shows? What famous movies are you in? Okay. Let's take it one by one. Well, I am not in any famous movies yet, but hey, I I, I would love to be in, uh, in one. So, you know, I'll keep you guys posted. Maybe that will be when we have um, another one of these videos. Yeah, I, my maybe I answer that question too. In okay. The next, um, fam I'm in a lot of famous movies but only as an extra, which doesn't really count, you know, like Primal Fear and and uh, what's the one with Tom Cruise? Jerry Maguire, which is still on our list. I still haven't oh, seen that yeah, movie. Okay. And so I, I worked in, in about 200 different movies and TV shows and commercials in that first two years when I moved to the United States and I worked as an extra almost every single day. So a lot of movies. So my favorite genre to watch I, I mean, I love rom-coms. That's Those are the things that I like to watch. So um, unfortunately, we, we probably won't be <laughs> doing any movie reviews on rom-coms because yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them I've seen. I love rom-coms. I'm a sucker for them because I'm a sucker for a love story. But I do really like psychological thrillers. Those are really fun and thrilling and suspenseful. I like trying to figure them out and the puzzle piece, like Memento that we had reacted mm. to was really fun to kind of piece together and try to figure out what it all meant. I love things like that, um, or crime dramas, that sort of thing. Like actually, I, a lot of the like crime TV shows we watch, like these like mini series that are TV things, um, with like crime element, I like those a lot. My favorite genre would be drama, I think. And if it has a sci-fi element to it, that's that's fine too, yeah. Mm, okay. I really like, I mean, franchises. So far, that Rocky franchise was outstanding. I was yeah. shocked because it took me by surprise. I didn't know it was gonna be such a, actually a love story. I didn't know, I thought it was just boxing, sports movies, which, I mean, I like sports, but I don't usually watch sports dramas. So that's why I've kind of avoided Rocky for so long. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that franchise and it was very well done from beginning to end for the most part. And yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
yeah, we have a lot more franchises to watch, like uh, oh, Back yeah. to the Future and Terminate and stuff yeah. like that. But so far, I think it's really hard to beat the Rocky franchise. I was absolutely, I still am in love with it. I thought it was one of the best things I have ever seen. And then my favorite actors, oh, and TV shows. Okay, so TV shows, I love comedies. I love Superstore, mm. um, The Office. Um, I, I, I really like, yeah, I, I watch a lot of Abbott Elementary, I'm a fan of. 911, that's a drama TV show that I've been watching. So I'm trying to get on that show. Yeah, you watch a lot of TV <laughs> shows also as homework as an actress because you you kind of need to know what's what's on right sure yeah um, yeah i don't watch so many tv shows but tv shows that i think the best i have ever seen in my life was breaking bad hands down mm. nothing comes close to breaking bad and another one was in treatment if you remember oh, yeah, that yeah. it's just a psychologist talking to his patients sounds very boring but it's riveting and, and the acting is just outstanding just a conversation between him and his patients or clients amazing so that's there are more but those two stand out favorite actors hmm so i really like really powerful actors i mean i guess the typical ones that everybody likes you know um i would say viola davis she is incredible um i really like Maybe um, Edward Norton. Mm. I think he's, you know, we we watched that one with Primal Fear. Primal Fear and American History. Oh uh, yeah, like yeah. he's just so solid. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman is just he's just so fat free. You know, he was just he, he, like he you, you could not catch him acting. Like it was just like, what is he doing? <laughs> like, how is he this good? Um, yeah, um, I'm sure there's more. Yeah, you know, Kate and the, Blanchett. There's also more. I wanna. I saw some stuff in the earlier stuff with Leonardo DiCaprio. I really like him, and I want to see a lot more of him. I also like um, Al Pacino and Stallone, especially after mm. after the Rocky mm -hmm. thing, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, I also like Tom Cruise, and I want to watch more of his too. So. Uh, Kevin the Neck says, "Origin story. Would love to hear about the first time you two met one another. Thank you for the entertainment. Our pleasure. Well, we met in acting class. I'm going to tell the story because I'm going to tell the shorter story. <laughs> um, so, at acting class, I had just moved here as a fresh actor. I was looking for a class, and so I wrote down a list, and I made phone calls, left messages, hoping to audit classes." One class called me and they were not on my list. And so I thought, I'll just go check out a free audit. And I go to this class. This guy is sitting in a dark corner in the back, looking so like a serious actor, <laughs> like mysterious. I was like, ooh, what's his, what's his deal? Um, but yeah, we met in our acting class um, that he had been at. So it was actually very, I think it was very serendipitous Dipitous, mm. because I like I literally did not have that class on my list, so I, it was meant to be. So I was sitting there in the back eating those peach gummy rings, you know, those gummy bears, those gummy rings. Mm -hmm. And she has a sweet tooth, so she kept looking back, kind of like that, and finally had enough courage to ask, "Hey, can I have some too?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." So I went a few steps down, reached into the back. And I wasn't thinking anything in that moment, but I put that gummy ring like, on her ring finger. And she just looked at me. I was like, what the? <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I'll eat this before he, try he gets any ideas. <laughs> this really happened like yeah, that. Yeah, it did. It really did. And then now look at us. So the I rest guess, is history. I guess that was a good move. <laughs> um, at Hops 47. So yes, so a see ya in prime of oh see ya in prime of fear. This one, have you been an extra in many more movies? I think you did answer this. Yeah, one. like I said, like over two hundred different TV shows, and movies, and commercials. So I'm all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy. I've done background work as well, and I don't usually watch 
my like if I'm doing background I don't necessarily watch the movies or anything like that but it was interesting because one time uh, I was in a movie like as a background for a couple of months like I was there like one of their regulars and all of a sudden some friends from high school called me like are you in this movie and I was like how do they know? Because I don't tell people about my background stuff. That was, at the time, that was what I was doing to pay the bills, you know? Um, and then I noticed that I was in the trailer. Like, I got, I, I, I made it on the tra in the trailer, like one of my reactions. So that was... I remember that. Yeah, yeah, prom night. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, moving right along. Sally Bag says, how many movies have you guys been in? I'd like to see some of your work. Well, I mean, I've been in a lot of independent movies, things that you probably may not have seen unless you're a real cinephile, um, things that go to festivals, things that are um, sometimes that don't even get distributed or seen because a filmmaker hires us and then it's up to them what they do. But we've made films ourselves um, that we're in, but between the both of us, we've been in a lot of different films Oh, you you were in Clueless, the TV show. That's true. I was working as an extra in the TV show Clueless on a golf course. And I was just standing there with other extras. And then the director came up to me and said, Hey, what's your name, Mike? Uh, are you Zach? Screen actor skills? Said, yes. Can you say, hey, hot dog, slow down? <laughs> I said, yeah, hey, hot dog, slow down. Okay, come with me. So they put me on this golf cart and suddenly I was the golf marshal. And then you see the crew, the clueless crew, driving past me real fast in a car. And I just have to look at them and say, hey, hot dog, slow down. Hey, hot dog, slow that down. Was scene. Then there was another little scene with no um, um, lines. But the funny part was that I was just being paid as an extra. As soon as I opened my mouth, I now became a day player. Yeah. Much more money. Yeah. And then two days later, they called me and said, hey, remember that line you said? Yeah, the sun was already too low. The footage doesn't match. Can you show up again and do it again? I show up. Now I'm being paid as a weekly player. Much more money. Yes. And I have my little trailer with the Mike Boss name on it. I couldn't believe it. Amazing. I felt like, what's going on? <laughs> so that was that. Um, Steve Al Aldersley says, Hi, Mike and Jessica. What movies, what movies you have seen do you wish that you could watch again first time on the channel? All of them. Um, first time, I wish I could watch maybe American History X because there was so much going on in that movie that, you know, I, th I think that it, it, you do need to see more and, you know, maybe I get more through re-watching. So mm. I would say that. Contact was very thrilling too. Mm, yeah. Yeah, E.T. too. <laughs> so Steve asks another question. Out of the movies you have reacted to for the channel, which are your favorites? I think we yep, answered we that answered one. That, yeah. And then have you thought, and then Steve again, have you thought about introducing some kind of rating system for the movies that you watch? I did think about that before we started this channel to have some kind of a five star rating or maybe a turkey and we can in the end kind of like lift up three stars, but then we decided against it, but uh, that was an idea. And by the way, the reason why Steve has more than one question is because he sent in a testimonial video, oh, yes. which you can see in the short uh, the tab on our channel. Good stuff. Yeah, really good. Thank you, Steve. And Steve asked it again, in order to build the channel, is it better to focus on huge movies that everyone wants to see reactions for? Or is there more value in reacting to movies that have very few or no reactions out there? It's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that. Probably I, the big movie everybody wants to see if we haven't seen them yet, you know? Well, I would definitely say that's the case. Yeah. Like if, if we're focusing on building the channel, you know, I, we couldn't show a, an independent film that nobody knows yeah. because I think the whole thing is people want to watch the movie afresh through our eyes. Yeah. So I think that that works for classics, which is perfect because they're honestly classics that I like we should have watched, you know, and just haven't, you know, through time, through all kinds of circumstances, just never did. So I'm glad we're on this journey with you guys to do that. Um, Steve says again, have you discovered anything while reacting that proved to be useful when making your own films? Absolutely. 
Good question. I think that's a great question. Absolutely. I think as filmmakers, I learn from watching other people's films. I, I think there is a reason why, you know, you do want to watch films if you're making films, if you are making films, because you get to see what other directors did and how they set up their their uh, blocking and their angles and their story. Like I learn to be better actually, and to see with different eyes when I'm watching other people's movies. So I'm constantly learning, and I I believe growing as an artist because of it. Uh, yeah, and I think I learned the most, maybe not while watching, but then doing the editing. That mm -hmm. really, because now I see how tight things can be. And I can tell if a movie is well written, much more difficult to edit because you can't just edit half the movie out mm -hmm. and still have integrity of the story. So everything can be tighter and I think it will improve my screenwriting because I, I, I can see how things can be even tighter, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, a, a good learning experience for sure. Steve asks again, have you considered a series of reactions featuring a specific actor such as Tom Hanks or Denzel Washington? It's a great, great question again. And actually, I should also say this, love Denzel Washington. Actually, mm -hmm. he's another one of my favorites and Tom Hanks. We we haven't considered that really i mean we we definitely have i mean there seems to be a kind of kind of a theme you know with some of these classic movies they tend to have the same actors like tom cruise uh, or sorry tom hanks mm -hmm. we watched um one of his movies castaway and then there was another one that we had watched i can't remember but like there t there tends to be the same type of actors and the same type of movies that were classics but not necessarily like choosing to do a movie based on just one actor. I think we're more wanting to base it on um, classic movies that people know and love. Yeah, and, and we're based it more on franchise, maybe, the, you know, if we watch something, yeah. you know. And then, of course, if we watch a movie with, with Robin Williams, then all the people suggest other movies Robin Williams True. is in, and they will go on our list and one day we'll watch them. You know? True. Kim asks, if this is too personal, just skip my question. Okay, <laughs> we'll see, Kim. Um, I would like to know how you two met. It's oh. something I, I'm always curious about couples, as there are some great stories of how two individuals collide in this world and then say, he, she is the one for me. Well, Kim, I hope you were listening to that question that we answered earlier about how I moved here and was with Mike and how we got married. So not too personal, that literally is totally fine to answer. And you ask another question, have you considered viewing some of the old great films such as Casablanca, Sunset Boulevard, What Happened to Baby Jane, Vertigo, Harvey, Citizen Kane, To Kill a Mockingbird, It's a Wonderful Life, Psycho, Ben-Hur, and so many more films with great actors, most of them now gone. These movies always surprise the younger generation at how good they are, even the ones in black and white. Um, that is a fantastic rec. Like, thanks for that list of recommendations. I'm. Uh, we definitely would like to. Yeah, There's some of those of movies are actually they're on, on our, list. our list. Yeah. So I'm so totally open to watch we're gonna, classics. Absolutely. We're gonna watch them. Yes, definitely. And Kim, my last question: Have you considered posting full view reviews reactions in addition to the edited version on your channel? Um, I did consider that for a while but then i quickly realized that i just don't have time to do even more work and then i also mm -hmm. thought the thing is the way i do the editing you pretty much pretty much get the entire movie experience in a shorter version and i think that's what people want also sometimes when we watch a movie we talk some stuff that's kind of irrelevant to the story or we make inside jokes that i then cut out or also sometimes we make a comment over very important dialogue. And then later when I do the editing, I can take our comment and move it a little bit to the side so we still have the important dialogue of the movie and keep the integrity of the story. Now, if I would just put everything together the way it was, I don't think it would be as great as an edited version. So that's the reasoning behind not doing that. Peace, love, happiness. Hello, Jessica and Mike. Question, which YouTube channels do you two enjoy watching? Oh, that's a good one. 
Um, so as far as YouTube channels, I I don't know. I, I like okay. I don't know. I watch a lot of like exercise exercise videos. Like I I'm a big at home fitness. Um, my favorite right now is Growing Ananas or Anas. I don't know how to say her name, but I love her. She's amazing. Her workouts are intense, but great. I love, so yeah, shout out to her. Yeah, I don't really um, follow any YouTube channel at the moment. I have just subscribed to some of them just because I want to support them, you know, but I don't have time to watch any YouTube channels. There was one I used to listen to, Epic Music. I had some about... Mm -hmm. Um, metaphysics and quantum mechanics and stuff like that. I love that. But right now, um, it's just focused on our own YouTube channel. Is there, and same question from Peace, Love, Happiness. Is there anything in your filmmaking journey that has completely surprised you? Ooh. A lot of things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Even being a filmmaker has surprised me, to be honest. I didn't, I, I, just, I moved out here to act. I did film school, yes, but I moved out here to act and I didn't even think about being a filmmaker. So this whole journey has taken me by surprise that I was like, that the that the, the film that I got in a prayer ended up now becoming my first time directorial debut feature film that went to a film festival of like that my top festival that I was like, must get into dances with films. And it has gone into uh, now seven other festivals and I'm I'm blown away. Honestly. Yeah, I, I think the whole journey is a surprise, you know, because and also what I said, su what surprised me was how difficult it is and how everything is connected. Like everybody, no not everybody knows each other, but the top, they all know each other. And if you if you don't know them, if you don't have any connections, it's the most important thing in Hollywood is having connections, even more important than talent and the second thing that surprised me is how much politics is in everything so that's another surprise same question from peace love happiness or another question which movies have had the greatest impact on us filmmakers Ooh. um hmm hmm have to think about that one yeah i i just liked movies even though in switzerland i didn't watch a lot of movies i always liked the concept of movies and i saw trailers and stuff and it wasn't a particular movie that inspired me you know it was just movies and i know for me now john q i remembered watching it in elementary school or so i it was denzel washington yeah denzel washington i was never i i i'm more i was always more of a tv girl and we watched it in class one day and i just remembered being so moved by this movie because you just saw a father who was doing everything he could to save his sick child and everything was so good like and i, I remember feeling as a kid like whoa that is you know it's remarkable so that was something that had an impact on me mm -hmm. film wise um and a last question from peace love happiness had you not pursued working in the film industry, what career path do you feel that you may have taken? Uh -huh. Probably would have been a doctor of some sort, maybe a pharmacist, I don't know. Because of your Nigerian my, parents. My, yeah, my parents were like, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. That was, that was were my only options growing up. That's all I knew. So filmmaking was not even mentioned because it was not even part of the conversation. Well, yeah, in Switzerland, I got my diploma in civil engineer design, draftsman, DF Bauzeichner. And then when I come over here, of course, um, but if not, oh, I was in the hiring process to become a police officer, mm. LAPD. But thinking back now, I don't know, maybe a psychologist would be nice to sit mm. at home and just listen to people talk and give them advice. That would be very nice. Well, n now I would say probably a chef for me. I could mm. kill it as oh, a yeah. chef. I cook, I slay in the kitchen, let me tell you. <laughs> personal trainer, <laughs> kitchen. I did that for many years, being a personal trainer. So, our Rocket White, what is a hypotenuse? I, I don't know what that is. I don't even know what that is, I'm sorry. That sounds like geometry, you know, like, like um, Pythagoras and stuff like that. Something like, I don't know, it's, a, it's strange, we have to look Sorry, it up. we'll have to look it up. Maybe you'll have to watch the next reaction video. <laughs> Cliff, I think more than anything else, what I really want to know is 
What are you planning to do with this channel? I know that nothing lasts forever and that you two have other projects that you're working on and goals that you're striving to achieve, but where do you see this channel in say five years? What do you want to achieve with this channel and how does it fit in with your other projects if at all? Yeah, what, wonderful um, point, question. you know, I like the insight in that. I, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, I um, right now, yes, we're kind of focusing on our filmmaking career and everything, but, um, and eventually, we, you know, especially if um, the channel keeps growing the way it's growing, we'll have to probably have some outside help. You know, we might have to have other people help because, it, it is a lot of work as we've talked about, but um, I, I don't know. I, I, I would, I, I, I hope that we would be in the, within the next couple of years in the 100,000 subscriber or plus um, and to keep doing this while also being able to keep, you know, like making it with our films. Yeah, I think one of the primary reasons to do it, not just because it's fun and we love to connect with the audience, with it's you guys, kind of yeah. audience building because yeah. we have big plans in our lives, you know, make movies and stuff. And if we can build an audience that supports us and, and likes us and likes our project, that would be great because we can take all those people on our journey together and doing something big together is almost always more fun than do it by ourselves in a dark <laughs> room, you know. So audience yes. building, I don't know where we're gonna be in five years. Maybe the channel morphs and something else. I don't know. But be there and you'll see. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Cliff. Um Handsome Stick says, where is this accent from? <laughs> yeah, it's not Irish. Most people think I'm Irish, but I'm from Switzerland. I'm from the Swiss German part. So my accent is a Swiss German accent. Uh yo uh yo Sorry, why Zolas T? Sorry if I mispronounced that. In one of your reactions, you said that some films you stop watching after you realize you are not enjoying them and therefore don't upload your reaction. I'm itching to know which films failed you and why. <laughs> yeah, when we started this channel, we thought we're gonna watch the newest movies on Netflix, you know, because it's hip and trendy. So we started watching those movies and it was one disaster after another. And I don't even remember the names of those movies because, but it was just bad. And the reason why we bail out is usually if we don't connect with the main character, it's not good. Sometimes we watch something, we don't care about any of the characters. Yeah. No connection, nothing. The story is lame. Once you reach the first plot point, that's usually the plot point when you know what the rest of the movie is going to be about. If the, that plot point is not interesting or not even happening, it, you know, we usually bail out. So once we started to listen to you guys, yes, the advice to watch all the movies, that's when it really clicked, yes. you know? I would say quite simply, yeah, that's why we rely on you guys' polls because it, it kind of cuts that time from us having to, uh, you know, weed out the ones that don't work. And quite honestly, we're not critics. Like, I don't, we don't consider ourselves critics. We want to have a great time with this channel. We want to be like building and uplifting and admiring great filmmaking so we don't want to be the ones going like oh that person that this filmmaker this director did this you know that's not really like that's, our job that's a good point yeah. so um instead we you know we just appreciate the ones who do really yeah. great work highlight the good movies yeah. forget about the bad movies so um annette uh, Ka uh kahalan Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Boss. I absolutely adore you and your genuine reactions. Thank you. Thank you. My question, and I love your emojis and things. It's just so cute. We made you decide to, what made you decide to get into movie reactions? Thank you for the laughs. Much love, Annette. I remember one day sitting at my desk, seeing a movie reaction, Popcorn in Bed. I'm sure everybody knows them. I love them. They're yes. great. And I thought, what the heck is this? A movie reaction? Why the heck would I be interested in watching somebody else watching a movie? But hey, I'm open-minded. I clicked on it. I watched and I immediately understood. Mm. I immediately understood, yes, that is great. And I didn't tell you for a long time because yeah, I thought, no. that, you know, but then one day I told her and then it took months and months until you finally decided, okay, I'll check it. I, li I literally was like, no. <laughs> 
It's like, honey, no. Um, you know, and then I watched Popcorn in Bed. Mm -hmm. She is excellent. You guys, if you don't, in case you're not watching, I'm sure if you're watching us, you're probably watching her, but in case you're not, you should be watching hers too. It's amazing. Shout Just, out to the Popcorn. Yes, yeah, shout out. I, I, she is actually somebody I do watch your channel. I try not to watch her movies that we haven't yet seen though, because I want to react to them and that, you know, but yeah, but love her. Um, Dirty Day Mix. Congratulations, guys. Can you name your favorite top three movie directors regards from Chile? Directors. Okay, well, I really, I, I like Martin Scorsese. I do. I like, um, I mean, from what we have seen, Christopher Spielberg, Nolan. Christopher Nolan, and Robert Zemeckis so far. Robert Zemeckis, yeah. yes. I never really knew. I, I mean, I knew the name, but I didn't really know what you know he really does. I like Robert Zemeckis. And after watching Contact, which was done by Robert Zemeckis, I looked up Robert Zemeckis and I saw he did Back to the Future trilogy, mm -hmm. which we haven't seen yet. And he did Forrest Gump, which is still on our list. Okay. So I know those are good movies already before I even watch them. So I think I like him. <laughs> So, Knife Jail, congratulations in advance. What is the unique, funny event you came across as an actor, actress? Huh. Well, I'm not pursuing acting anymore, and I haven't for a long time, so you probably have a lot of stories. Events that have come, like, you mean, like, in, in the movies that we've reacted to, or just in general? I guess, no, no, on your journey as being an actress, what situations, funny or unique moments you have encountered. Huh. For example, those fake auditions and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had I've had some really scammy auditions. Um, you know, one that I went to was, at, this was when I first moved to LA. I didn't really know where, like my way around or anything. And I went to an audition and I got there and it was at somebody's apartment. Ooh. And I was like, well, I mean, maybe it's like made up into like a suite, you know, because sometimes they do that, you know, they have uh, offices within. I got up there, I probably should have been listening to like, <laughs> to that little voice inside of me saying, turn away. No, I went up and then I was like, oh my gosh, this is somebody's apartment. Like legit, a guy with a camera and a wrinkly backdrop. Mm -hmm. Legit. I, li I And he acts... This is really, this is, this is where I don't want to go too much into it because it gets dark sometimes, but he literally had me read a role and then he said, well, I want you to read the lead role, which you'll have to get nude for. And I need to see you nude. I'm not even kidding when I said, when he said that, like, there's a lot of these kind of situations. It's not the happiest thing. So we'll just keep it there. Um, maybe there's something, what? No, no. I was just thinking about when you worked as an extra and it was so cold that when you breathed out, oh, you yeah. saw like the, the little, and they, so you literally Extras, couldn't breathe. Don't breathe. I just yeah. remember being frozen. Don't like it breathe. was so cold outside. Like I had on layers and boots. My feet froze in the boots. And I, and like, we were supposed to pretend it was, it's summer, it, right? it was a commercial. So you had to, cause they always shoot advanced, you know, in advance to what the season is. So you have to pretend that it was summertime. So then uh, before they shot, they're like, okay guys, take off your coats. We had to take off all the coats and stuff and throw them to the side. And we're in this marching band pretending to have a good time and dancing. And then like, you know, we can't help it because that cold breath of air is coming out. You can you see know? it, yeah. And then cut extras don't breathe we can see this and it's like so we have to have rolling okay and action you know and it was horrible i got done from that set i blasted the heat in the car my feet were frostbitten it was so bad and i was shivering even with the heat oh uh, it's so true i remember <sighs> that working for baywatch and it was winter and all that stuff okay jack's here are you planning to view the rest of the Jaws franchise? Jaws, the revenge happens to be, oh, Jaws, the revenge happens to be one of my guilty pleasures as it goes way over the top. Love the channel, by the way. <laughs> I actually had no idea it was a, uh, I had no idea that there was more. Yeah, I don't Jaws. know if they were done by Spielberg though. Oh, okay. We, we'll look into it. We'll look into it. Cause I, yeah, I didn't know. So maybe stay tuned. <laughs> Um, Devin, Dev Nexon, 
which filmmakers are you looking up to that not a lot of people know about but had a huge impact on you who um that's a good question i mean i personally i've been meeting a lot of filmmakers at festivals mm -hmm. and i go and i watch their work and i'm amazed at the level of talent i'm amazed um i i am part of a screening team where i'm helping for a film festival to like screen feature films and to like give my feedback and there's a lot of filmmakers um i couldn't tell you off the bat um i'll try to capture a list somewhere but like there's a lot of filmmakers that i've that i've that i've seen their projects and i'm i'm blown away and i'm like wow i'd love to work with that person so mm, yeah that's good that's good makes sense um johnny two feathers what are your favorite directors I think we answered yep, we that. We answered that, and I think that. I was, think that was the last yay. question. Okay, yay! Thank you so much for submitting those <laughs> questions. I hope you guys learned something about us, and maybe next time you have more questions. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun, yes. <laughs> so that um, concludes our 10,000 subscriber celebration video. Thanks again, and we will see you soon at Boss Movie Reactions. All right, bye bye. Bye.